When editing at SPNN, you will be using one of three types of external hard drives. Although they may look different, they actually have quite a few similarities. If we look at the back, each of them has two FireWire 400 inputs and an input for the power supply. However, if you're interested in purchasing your own drive, here are some of the minimum requirements to look for. You'll want to find a drive that has a 7200 rotational speed, a cache of 8 megabytes or greater, works with Mac OS X if you're editing with Apple like we do, two FireWire 400 inputs, and this will cost you anywhere between $100 and $300, which will range in a 250 to 500 gigabyte size. But if you plan on editing here at SPNN, these are one of the three drives that you'll end up with, and even our smallest drive should be suitable for your needs. Now once you obtain the hard drive from the front desk, all you have to do is go into our edit suites, and we already have all of the power supplies plugged in, and even on FireWire that you can plug into your drive. If we take a closer look, this is the power supply for the red drive, and the two other LACI drives look more alike, and the main difference is that one of them has a little plastic black tooth in the center of it, and that one goes to the Porsche drive. Okay, so when you find the appropriate power supply, uh, just make sure that you plug it in, and it's snug, and then grab the FireWire cable and insert that into the back of the drive, and then you will notice that it will mount onto the desktop of your computer. Now I can open the drive just by double clicking on it. It's actually empty and if we look down here at the bottom it says there's 152 gigabytes um, on the drive. Uh, this was a 160 gigabyte drive that we had uh, mounted. Now another helpful tip is that if you right click over the hard drive icon and select get info another window will open up that gives us a little bit more information about our hard drive and the main thing that you'll want to make sure is that it is formatted for a Mac. Now if you're using an SPNN drive you don't have to worry about this at all but if you're purchasing a brand new drive you're just going to want to make sure it's formatted for a Mac and not MS-DOS. If it is formatted incorrectly then you're going to want to take it through the disk utility and format it correctly. Okay so let's pretend we're going to start an iMovie project and we're going to load iMovie and uh, create a new project the one thing that we want to go over here is saving our projects properly and making sure that they get to the drive and not save to the internal hard drive of the computer. So for project name, instead of using the default Migrate Movie, we're going to call this project um, Hard Drive Demo. Okay, and now let's select our hard drive, which is in the left-hand column over here. And we'll notice that this uh, hard drive is empty of course but if you don't see this window make sure that this blue box here is checked it should be pointing upward instead of downward and then it will kind of open itself up um, if you are going to be working on multiple projects you may want to create a new folder so that each project will end up being a in a different folder but that will totally be up to you and your organization and so we're going to go ahead and create a folder and call it hard drive projects or project and hit create and that our hard drive demo will actually be put into that folder and hit create and there you go iMovie will open up and you will have properly saved your project okay now let's try saving a Final Cut Express project to our hard drive okay at the top let's find system settings a new window will open up and basically what we need to do is set our scratch disks here. Currently this computer is set up to save everything to the internal drive which is not good for us because we want to be able to carry our project anywhere we go. So we need to set our scratch disk here and a new window will open up and we're going to want to click on our hard drive because we want our footage that we capture to be saved to our drive. Now let's set the waveform cache to our external drive and what you'll notice is that we now have three folders. Um, when we clicked on this first tab and it's now set to our hard drive, we got three folders thrown in there that are on our drive currently. Um, and when we continue setting the next three tabs to our external drive and autosave um, eventually we're going to have six folders in this hard drive 
that will contain information uh, from our project. And let's hit OK. We're not done yet, so let's uh, go back up to the top and we're going to find Easy Setup. The next thing you're going to want to make sure that your project has is that it's set up for DVNTSC. Unless you're working on your own computer, just double check this. Somebody could have set it to PAL or DV Converter, and this won't help you. So make sure it says DVNTSC anytime you open up your project, and you'll save yourself um, some heartache. And then just click Setup. The next thing that we need to do is we need to officially save this project. If you look here in the browser window, it's still called untitled project number one and that's because we still need to save the final cut project file so under file go to save project as and our save box will open up and we're just going to want to make sure that we select our external drive as the place where we're going to save this final cut express project file and i'm going to call it hard drive demo and people get confused by this step and it, it'll be confusing until you get used to it but saving the scratch disk and saving the project are, are two different things. It is possible to save things in two different places. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to eject our drive. If you right click on the drive, you can uh, select eject and you're able to eject the drive. Or you can grab it and take it to the trash can, which will turn into an eject button. And then just let it go and you'll hear the uh, drive power down. And you can just uh, click off the power button if your drive has one. And now it's safe to unplug the firewire and the power supply. And that's it for our tech tip. Thank you for watching.